Hello, my name is Chelsea Kravka, and today we're going to be doing our meditation and our story about the book, The Lorax. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing except old crows in the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old onceler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the onceler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin' on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin', cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special bank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the lorix was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail. And the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snoove, his strange, secret strange hole in his grubulous glo glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slop. Down slept the whisper my phone to your ear and the old onesler's whispers are not very clear since they have come down through a snurgly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swony swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop, and with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a sneed, a sneed of fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for a bicycle seat. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool need. But the very minute I proved he was wrong, the very next minute I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three 98. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You can never tell. You can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, 
cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, there's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Ditch. And in no time at all, the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeves, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of tropula trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super ax hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds four times as fast as before and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. And I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloos who played in the shade of their barbaloos suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around, and my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They loved living there, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and then sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. <laughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled me. <coughs> gargled him, sniffed. Wensler, he cried with a croculess croak. Wensler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup, also Schloppity Schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wensler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the hummingbirds hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed, so I'm sending them off, though their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffula trees into sneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack from outside, and the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about it with all my heart. But now, says the Wensler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better not. So, catch.
calls the Wentzler and he lets something fall. The truffula seed, it's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds and truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air, grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. And that is the end of our story. So here are some questions for you about that story. Describe what the land of the Lorax was like originally. Why does the Lorax need to speak for the trees? What does he say? When the Wentzler's business is booming, what happens to the environment? How about the different animals? Did people really need the product of the factory, the sneeze? Was having that item worth the cost of damaging the environment? The Wentzler says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. How is this statement relevant to us here and now? What do you think you can do to make things better? Now we're going to do our meditation. So settle in and get ready, whether you're sitting or laying down, be in a comfortable spot. And we'll listen to our bell and then get started. Kindness is our ability to understand and care about others. It's through kindness that we are moved to care for and protect people, plants, animals, and minerals. We will now do a meditation that develops our capacity for kindness for forests. So sit quietly and comfortably, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, relax your body. Again, deep breath in and long, slow exhale. Now get a sense of the trees that are around where you are. Imagine how their roots tunnel underground and support where you're sitting. Imagine the canopy overhead creating shade and a cozy place to sit. Imagine the fresh air that the leaves are giving us. Dear trees around us, may you be safe and protected. May you have enough rain, sun, clean air, and soil that is nutritious for your growth. May the vines, mushrooms, insects, birds, and animals that depend on you for their homes and lives be free from suffering. May they be safe and protected. May they have enough shelter and food for their lives and their families' lives. Now picture trees and forests throughout our town, in parks near your home, along rivers. May the forests in our town be safe and protected. May no one cut down the trees unnecessarily. May these trees be safe from invasive vines, insects, and diseases that can harm forests. May our forests be safe from climate change. May our forests be safe from unnatural fires. Now imagine all the trees and forests throughout the world, some in grasslands, some in lush jungles, some along rivers and the plains, all throughout the world. A third of our entire planet is covered in forests, many of which are in danger from deforestation where they're being cut down. May all forests on earth be safe and protected. May all native peoples and villagers, animals, plants, insects, and birds who depend on these forests be free from suffering. 
May they too be safe and protected. May all our forests be safe from invasive plants, insects, and diseases that can cause harm. May our forests be safe from climate change. May our forests be safe from unnatural fires and from logging and clear cutting. May all beings be safe and protected. May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings be happy. Now we'll listen to our bell again. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week.